A warm welcome to one and all. Today, we're going to talk about Chitra Nakshatra. Chitra Nakshatra is the 14th Nakshatra of the 27 Nakshatras and is right there in the middle of the zodiac. The ruler or the deity of this Nakshatra is the Vishwakarma. Vishwakarma is also known as Tatswa. He is one of the 12 sons of Devi Aditi and Rishi Kashyap. They are said to be moving around the zodiac every year with their mother Aditi in the forefront. Now, Vishwakarma or Tatswar has been entrusted with the creative powers of the universe. There's a difference between Lord Brahma and Tatswar or Vishwakarma. Lord Brahma is said to be the father or the creative energy, the creator of this universe. However, Vishwakarma is the architect, the one who is entrusted with creating the beauty that is that can be celestial or it can also be the one that we see around on this planet. Vishwakarma is also entrusted with the job of creating beautiful bodies of children in the womb of their mother of any kind. Also, we find that Vishwakarma has very illustrious sons, though not in a very positive manner, but they have been illustrious nevertheless. Vishwakarma is the deity who is entrusted or who has been given the job of creating the celestial weapons also, be it the Trishula of Lord Shiva, the discus of Lord Vishnu, or the Kamandal, the water pot of Lord Brahma, and the Somras utensils of the Devatas. So a person with such a lot of creative power in trusts a huge amount of creativity into this nakshatra of Chitra. Mars, which is the Vimshotri Dasha Lord of this nakshatra, gives a lot of spirit of doing things, energy into this nakshatra, making this nakshatra one of the very vibrant nakshatras of the 27 nakshatras. The symbol of this nakshatra is a pearl. The pearl is found inside an oyster. Many of us love the pearls, but do we realize how this pearl is made? The pearl is made when a very small irritant, even if it's a grain of sand, enters into the oyster and starts irritating it. The oyster then lets out enzymes that start covering, forming a layer on this irritant, the sand or whatever it is, and then finally, what results is a beautiful solidified pearl. When the person who in search of oysters and the pearls open it up, they see all that they get to see is the beauty of the pearl. Nobody notices the irritant, but it is the irritant that makes the pearl a beauty. So let us check out how this beauty, how this irritant uh, was the one which helped shape Leonardo da Vinci's life. Leonardo da Vinci was a renaissance artist, inventor, engineer, sculptor and painter and he was actually a universal genius. He invented engines for, of war and built bridges and chariots as an engineer in the science of artillery and sages. He experimented in oft-repeated attempts to build an airplane. He left examples of his talent as a scientist, architect, musician, mathematician, teacher, and businessman. He created both the sewer and the palaces. He dug latrines and he raised fountains. He dissected corpses to see what the body of the human looked from inside and he painted angels. He's done so much that it's it's... It's unbelievable that a man could have so many dimensions to himself. Let us see, let us move into his history and see as to what he actually was, uh, what was the irritant that shaped him and then let us move on to his chart. Well, the incident that actually shaped him into a person that he became was that he was born to a noble father, yet his mother came from a peasant background. So the tag of illegitimacy 
which remained with him throughout his life because in those days in 90 in 1452 there was no uh, there was no redemption for these kind of situations on top of it all later on it was found out that he was a homosexual and again this though is not taken in any other light in today's day and age but in those days this was definitely not taken as it is today so he was asked to leave florence well while he was gathering uh, momentum as a painter in florence so he was asked to leave that place and when he moved out he became one of the best known um, painters and his career just boomed he became not just a painter but everything under the sun that was possible he did and he did it too good let us take up his chart in in his chart we have mars the lord of the lagna and the sixth house placed in exaltation in the third house mars is the karaka of the third house and it is the planet of vimshotri dasha for chitra nakshatra saturn which is the lord of the third house and the fourth house is placed in the 11th house and is retrograde in the chitra nakshatra there is an established relationship between mars and saturn this means that the person should move into some technical work you name any technical job and leonardo da vinci did it so this makes both his mars and saturn extremely effective we also take into account that being the lord of the third house saturn is retrograde showing that there's some past life karma association with his creativity with his publications mars is the ruler of the sixth lord uh, sixth house and definitely again showing a lot of his prarabdha associated with his hands with his creativity with his publishing abilities mars gives him energy to do all these work again saturn is the lord of the fifth fourth house of masses and he was highly endeared with the masses to the masses his paintings till date are conserved in the best of the museums the world over and privately sold at exorbitant prices again mars is the lord of the lagna again sixth lord gives you competition in anything that leonardo da vinci did was always and was always the top of the form and sixth house also deals with certain amount of stigma so the stigmas that he had to face and which shaped him again was related to chitra nakshatra to mars this is a very beautiful and a very uh, very composite way when you can look into how one particular nakshatra can give such a lot of effect in a person's chart especially if the lagna lord the moon the sun or the lagna is placed within it all these give a strength of character to the person and they help a person go a long way if you take into it account its positive sides there's so much to be learned from the nine nakshatras of the second set also so if you are interested in joining the course my course is starting on the 1st of september 2019 at 10 am ist there are more on nakshatras to keep coming on this platform also so see you when i present with a new nakshatra thank you